Welcome back everybody. This video we are going to be talking about passing arrays to functions. And this isn't something new. We actually did this a little bit ago when we did, what was it, multi-array? We basically created this function to print arrays. And in fact, I'm going to use this function. So if you don't have it, pause it now and type it out. Now I'm going to go back to my pass array file. And basically what I want to show you guys is how passing arrays works and why we why exactly we need this size variable. Okay, so let's create an array. And you know, I love my pizza. So not only do I eat pizza like a lot when I eat it, but I eat it regularly throughout the day. So every single meal, you know, this is, this is, I get, I have six meals a day. I mean, I eat a lot of pizza. So this is what I ate today. <laughs> like usual, I'm giving you a completely use useless example, but that's okay. <laughs> now when we call this print array, we're going to basically say slices each meal, and then we're going to have the size, which is six. And then when we comp uh, compile and run, this is what it will do. It'll print the values, C prints them all, and then it's done. So the thing is, in general, when we pass things, not in general, all the time, when we pass things to an array, it's passed by value, meaning that we can't change the value out of the, the argument that was passed in. Meaning, if I do something like this, hey, let's, let me show you, let me create a function. Actually, I'm gonna make this a void function. And this is going to take an integer. And we're going to increment a here. Well, what happens is if, if I did something like this, and a equals five, and then we called do something and passed in a. Well, for one, these are two different variables, just so you guys are clear. This a is not the same as this a, but it's passed by value, meaning the value five is copied into this a. Thus, if we print a out here, it prints the value five. But enough chatter, let's just go through an example. Let's say not only do I print this value, but I actually want to increment that value. So what I could do is say ri plus plus. What you'll notice is that this is actually going to change the original array that was passed in and I was gonna say we could just call the print function afterwards, but it's gonna change the value. So let me just copy this code here. <laughs> so we're gonna change the size to six there. We're not gonna increment it. And we're not gonna call it R here. We're gonna call it slices and then we're going to reference index i, and I think that's everything. Okay, now I just need to clean some up, some of this up, because it's not clear. There we go. Okay, so the original values are four, five, four, six, three, two. We pass them into this function and they're changed to five, six, five, seven, four, three. But then when we go and print the, the array again outside of the function, the values remain at the incremented values, not the original. So what happens is when we pass this slices each meal, when we pass that into the print array, it's, it's decaying from an array to a pointer. And that's what happens when you pass arrays. And when that happens, you also lose some functionality of figuring out the size of the array. There are some tricks you can do to figure out the size of the array, but you would only be able to do it like here or in this main function. Once you're in this, this print array, you're not able to do that because a pointer doesn't contain a size. So therefore we need to include this size. If we tried to figure out the size using some of the other techniques that are out there that would work in this main function, you're going to calculate the size of the pointer, 
which is definitely different than the size of the data the pointer points to. So this is some confusing stuff, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert, but what I, what I can say is that it is possible to make functional code <laughs> and understand what's going on. It just takes a lot of practice. So go through, make some functions, and try changing values inside and seeing if they are changed outside and understanding when that's the case and when that's